Hi everybody, it's Lucinda Bassett and I am so excited to be here. Welcome to Let Go with Lucinda. Um, That's the podcast. If you're listening on podcast, I'm so glad you're listening on podcast. And if you're on my Zoom tonight from Panic to Power, woohoo! I'm glad you're here. Um, We're going to have a fabulous time tonight. We're going to talk about narcissism, which is just such a heavy topic, but You know, um, I want you to go on to my podcast and please um, subscribe as you can, it will be sent to you automatically if you didn't get a chance to hear it. A lot of people are telling me that they're really enjoying listening to the podcast when they're not watching Zoom because they just get a lot of support from the podcast. So you can hear most of these Zoom calls on the podcast. You can also go to YouTube and Google Lucinda Bassett Zoom and you can watch me if you're just dying to see me, <laughs> which I doubt. <laughs> I'm trying not to wear my hat, you know, because everybody's saying, why do you wear that hat all the time? But I tend to like to hide under my hat. So anyway, I'm so excited to be here and I'm going to try to stay on this mic because the sound is much better when I'm on the mic. So if I'm eating the mic, it's because I don't like to eat mics. I just want the sound to be good. All right. So first of all, I want to share something with you from my book because, you know, I just love to do that, you know. So I'm going to start off by telling you who you are because there's it's highly unlikely that you're that you have narcissistic personality disorder because I know you because you're on this because you probably have anxiety and most people with anxiety are like this. You always think of something positive and beautiful. Sometimes you feel insecure and scared, but at least your feelings are yours. You create your experiences and you try to be happy and appreciate other people's people thinking of other people often with warmth and caring. You have confidence in what you do. No matter what else somebody tells you about you, you see how much you've grown because you recognize your doubts as just signs of strength, not weakness. You maintain a strong commitment to improving yourself. You realize you have things you want to work on. And even though you believe you're already a really good person, you know there are things about yourself that you'd like to grow and change. You like a lot of things about yourself and you speak to yourself with compassion and kindness. You're patient with yourself and you care about other people. You take pleasure in your home, your family, and your friends. And you take pleasure in your family and your friends' happiness. Um, You're able to see sunshine and rainbows in your family's future. You have the ability to solve problems. You see open windows. You're confident and strong and loving. And you surround yourself with positive, loving people. You have a a very strong sense of well-being and mutual respect for yourself and the people that you love. So that, my friends, is not narcissism. So what is narcissism? Well, first of all, um, narcissism, narcissism is something that we all experience. It's a sense that, you know, that we're valuable and we're worthy and we're worthy of great things and that we can bring greatness into our lives. Um, But narcissistic personality disorder is different. It's actually, um, it's a, it's a personality disorder characterized by a sense of um, exaggerated self-importance feelings that you're superior to other people and that you deserve special treatment. Um, It it makes you feel that you are always in, in a sarcastic way, people who are narcissistic feel that they're always right. Um, they, they believe that they're brilliant and that they're special and that they're loved. Um, they often monop- monopolize conversations and manipulate people. They can do something called gaslighting where they turn everything on you. I'll get into more of this a little bit later and make you question your own sanity, make you question your own judgment. Um, they are, they have superficial relationships and they have that are based on surface attributes. Um, they only value people to the extent that people are beneficial to them. And this is what we're talking about right now is narcissistic personality disorder. People who are narcissistic to the point where it's actually a problem, they lack empathy. Um, they, they lack the ability to care about the emotional well-being of other people. And in fact, often feed off of other people's insecurities. And the reason I'm talking about this right now is because people with anxiety and depression are often um, 
victims of narcissistic people because we are there, we can be their feed because we're kind of insecure sometimes and we get anxious and narcissism and people who have narcissistic personality disorder feed, they call it narcissistic feed. If you want to read the best, one of the best books ever written, it's actually $40 on Amazon and it's out, uh, it's, they're out of it right now. It's called Malignant Self-Love. And it's a book written by a narcissistic psychiatrist. It's, it's one of the most incredible books I've ever written. I, re- I wish I would have written it, read. And it's all about narcissism. So getting back to their lack of empathy, it's amazing. I mean, I have some narcissists in my life and you can sit there and try to explain to them why you're hurt or why they hurt you. And they, they just don't get it. They don't care. Um, they have a sense that of this highly, they have a high sense of their own self-worth, although they're extremely insecure. Um, they think they're exceptional. Um, they, they're, they're superficial. They avoid intimacy. Um, they get bored easily. They're restless. They get bored in conversation. Um, they have a they they have a difficult time maintaining reality based personal and professional goals over time. Um, they are they can be young narcissistic children can have failure to launch, and and the reason I want to talk about narcissism, and we're going a step beyond that, and, and narcissistic personality disorder is because. Um, these people will consume you. They will talk to you in condescending ways that make you feel like you're messed up. They will use this. um, I want to, I want to talk to you about something called gaslighting. That's very, very important. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, but there are several different types of narcissistic personality disorders. One is the covert narcissist. Um, They are basically hypersensitive to how other people perceive them, and they're chronically envious of everyone. They they can come off very shy and self-effacing, but they're really chronically always worried about how people think of them, how people perceive them, and they're envious of other people who have healthy relationships with their parents or healthy, healthy relationships with others, because lots of narcissists don't have healthy relationships, okay? Not with their families, not with their siblings, and not with friends. They often don't have very many friends, and and if they do, their friendships are surfaced. Then there's the cerebral cerebral narcissist. They derive their self-importance from their intellect, from their intelligence, and they they believe that... um, Cerebral par- narcissists believe they're smarter than everyone else. And, and why it's important to know this is because when you think, gee, I wonder if that person's a narcissist, maybe you can fit them in this category. You know, maybe they're covert, maybe they're shy, they come off hi- kind of hypersensitive about how everybody perceives them. And when they do that, they're really good at putting other people down in a really sarcastic way as if it's funny, but it's not funny and it hurts your feelings. The cerebral narcissist has a way of acting like you're stupid or you're ignorant and they're smarter than you. Um, The somatic narcissist get their self-worth from their bodies. They tend to obsess about being, you know, maybe they work out a lot. They're over concerned about their physical appearance, their weight. Um, They're all about, you know, how they look. And then the spiritual narcissist, this is one of the worst, they use their religion or their spirituality to intimidate um, others. And then they kind of have this, uh, I'm doing it in the name of God, I'm holier than thou, overemphasizing their personal relationship with God or their spirituality, making you feel like you're not good enough. So those are some of the categories of narcissism. And again, why am I talking about this today? Because I'm amazed how many people who struggle with anxiety disorder and depression are in relationships with people with narcissistic personality disorder. So what what does that mean? Well, people with NPD, that the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for narcissistic personality disorder, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time talking tonight. I think this is Mike in my mouth. Um, They have an inflated sense of self-importance and entitlement. Uh, They need constant admiration and praise. They expect special treatment due to their perceived superiority. They have an exaggerated sense of their talent. Um, They react very negatively to criticism. They are preoccupied with fantasies about their own ability to be successful, beautiful, 
or powerful, they always and often manipulate and take advantage of others' vulnerability. They have an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and emotions and feelings of others, and they behave almost consistently in an arrogant, careless manner. So if there's someone in your life that fits that profile, they may suffer from narcissistic personality disorder. And, and then it becomes, well, gee, that's my mother or my brother, or maybe it's your husband, or maybe it's your best girlfriend. I mean, and by the way, it can be all of them, okay? Um, people who, I don't want to say struggle, because here's, here's the interesting things uh, about narcissists in general is that um, they will consume you. They don't really think there's anything wrong with them. Even if they wondered if they have it, they wouldn't care if they did. Um, they don't, they, 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 they actually think that you think the way that they think, even though you don't. And if you don't, they don't care because they just think they're right. And they don't care if they offend you and they don't care if they hurt you. And in fact, they think that you're the one that's crazy and they will convince you that you are. And that's where this gaslighting comes in. I really never understood that word until someone explained it to me, but um, you know, I've been in relationships with narcissists and they have this way of, of making you gaslighting is, is a form of psychological abuse where a person makes someone question their perception of reality or their memory or their sanity or whether they're right or wrong. And it's, it's really a horrible feeling especially when you're someone who's anxious or depressed because you end up going, well, I don't remember saying that. And you end up confused, anxious, and unable to trust your memory, unable to trust your thoughts. And you know, if you're with someone who's really severely narcissistic, they can make you think you're crazy. And, and that's really scary when you're struggling with an anxiety disorder. So here are six examples of common gaslighting comments that someone might use on you to make you question your own sanity or your thoughts or your memory or whatever. Oh, that never happened. That never happened. That's not what, what you did. Or that's not what you said. Um, you're too sensitive. You have a terrible memory. I'm really worried that you can't remember what you said or what you did. Uh, you're crazy. You know, I think there's something wrong with you. I, I, I really think you're crazy. I'm sorry that my life just fell down. I'm sorry that you think I hurt you. I'm, and the reason that that's a big one. I'm sorry that you think I hurt you. How about just, I'm sorry I hurt you. I didn't mean to hurt you. Someone that's gaslighting you, it's I probably wouldn't even say, I'm sorry that you think I hurt you, but they would. They might say that you think I hurt you because they, they don't think they, they hurt you. You should have known how I would react to this. So these are six examples of possible, and I'm not saying someone saying that never happened is a gaslighting statement or that you have a terrible memory, maybe your memory's off, you know? Um, but I'm saying if, if you have someone in your life that's constantly throwing things up to you, making you feel bad about yourself, making you question your, your memory or something that you said, or making you question, um, you know, your thoughts, uh, making you feel confused and anxious, then maybe they're the one with the problem. You know, maybe they're the one trying to make you feel bad about yourself. And frankly, no one should ever make you feel bad about yourself. So if you're in a relationship and, and the problem with narcissism is that it's, it's, if you don't know what it is, you may not recognize it. And if you're someone who struggles with anxiety and depression and you're in a relationship with a narcissist or something by, again, I want to say someone with narcissistic personality disorder, after a while, you, you kind of find yourself going, God, what's wrong with them? They're, they're so insensitive or they're so self-absorbed or they're so arrogant or they're, you know, they're, they're, they can sit and they're so calm, but everything they say is a, is a cut or it's a put down or it's, you know, they're, they're, they're being, you know, um, passive aggressive and making fun of me. Well, that's very much and very often narcissistic personality disorder. So I wanted to talk about it tonight because you might be the victim. You might be the victim of someone that you love who treats you badly. And, and why is it important to say, well, maybe they have narcissistic personality disorder. It's not because you want to tell them that because they don't care. Here's the news. 
you need to set boundaries with these people, okay? The only thing they will pay any attention to is boundaries. And you need to, it's not about, you're hurting me when you say those things. It's about, you cannot speak to me that way. I will leave. You cannot say these things to me about my memory. I will hang up. You cannot tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll leave right now. You cannot make fun of me like that and talk to me that way. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go home. So it's really about you not setting the boundaries and having bad boundaries. And that's why these people treat you badly. And if you don't believe me, test it. If you have a narcissist in your life and they start talking down to you in sarcastic ways and trying to make you feel like there's something wrong with you or you're crazy or you're to this or you're to that, tell them you may not speak to me that way. I will get up from the table and leave or I will go home. I will not be talked to that way. See how they respond. That is the only way. That's the only way they're going to change the way they treat you. So how do you deal with narcissists in your life? We tend to use the word narcissist to describe a person who's self-centered and short on empathy, but it's important to remember that narcissistic personality disorder is a legitimate mental health condition that if it's really severe, might require diagnosis by a mental health professional. Probably won't happen because most people who have it don't care and don't want to get help. And that's the problem with it. Having, they have, a, in, they have an inflated sense of self. Um, they, they, you know, they need constant praise. They take advantage of others. They manipulate people and they don't care about hurting you. So if you want to have and continue to have a relationship with a narcissist and Hey, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's your son, maybe it's your best girlfriend. Okay. Maybe it's your husband. So how do you, how do you have relationships with narcissists? The first and most important thing you need to do is when they want to use these narcissistic personality traits on you, instead of getting hurt and taking it personally, see them for who they really are. They're manipulating and blatantly disrespecting you. Um, it's narcissism. Don't take it personally. Don't go, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I don't remember what happened yesterday. Maybe I you know, did say something I shouldn't have said to my, my daughter or my son or the person or whatever. But before you go blaming yourself and thinking there's something wrong with you and you see a pattern of these people hurting you over and over again, that's the key. Okay, if they continuously put you down, make you feel like there's something wrong with you, make you want to question your own sanity or your memory or things that you said, then maybe you need to step back and say, they might have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not going to say what, take what they're saying personally, and then break the spell and stop focusing on um, what they're saying about you and put it in perspective and start thinking about the boundaries you need to set with these people so that they can't put you down, make you feel small, make you feel bad, make you question your sanity anymore. You're not going to put up with it. Okay. Take charge, take care of yourself. And remember, it's not your job to fix them. You can't fix them anyway. They don't want to be fixed. Speak up for yourself. There are times when ignoring something and simply walking away isn't an appropriate response, but sometimes if it's a boss or it's a spouse, or it's a sibling. Sometimes, you know, narcissistic people enjoy making other people squirm. And if you start playing that game with them, I don't remember saying that. I don't mean that. I shouldn't have done that. Then you're playing tennis with them and it takes two people. So try to always stay calm and gentle and just simply say, hey, you know what? I don't want, you're not going to speak to me like this. I'll leave. Or I'm not going to be, you know, you're not going to talk to me about my memory or my clarity of thinking or telling me I'm crazy. I won't, I, you know, I won't hang out with you anymore. I'm not going to be treated this way. You're not going to treat me this way. It's disrespectful. Set clear boundaries. I, I cannot stress this enough. A person with narcissistic personality disorder is always very absorbed. 
They think they're entitled to go where they want, do what they want, snoop into your personal life, tell you how stupid you are, tell you how you should feel, even tell you how you should spend your money. That even, it might even tell you how you should dress, how you should drive. It's all bull crap, okay? No one should tell you how to look, how to dress, how to drive, how to spend your money. That's narcissism. So if they're trying to give you advice you didn't ask for, set boundaries. This is my money. Don't tell me how to spend it. I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. I'm going to date who I want to date and hang out with who I want to hang out with. This is my life. Um, to, you have to be abundantly clear about the, about the boundaries that are important to you in this relationship with this narcissist and, and give them consequences. You might say, well, why would consequences matter to them? But because someone with a narcissistic personality typically starts to pay attention only when something will affect them personally. So if you're in a love relationship with someone and you say, you know what, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back over until you treat me with respect, I will not let you talk to me that way, then losing you might be worth changing because that's the only time a severely narcissistic person will maybe treat you better is when you set boundaries and set limits and they feel like their life might change and it might not be as fun or as happy or productive if you weren't in it, then they might, they might change. Um, just make sure when you say, I'm not going to put up with it, as long as you treat me that way, I'm not coming back, that you don't come back for a week and still, until they start treating you you know, with respect, because if you go back the next day, then um, it's an idle threat and they're not going to take you seriously and they'll turn around and make fun of you or be sarcastic or treat you badly. The thing about narcissistic people is they can twist a conversation and there you are trying to defend yourself and they'll turn it on you and make you feel like it's your fault. You're the one with the problem. You're the one that's messed up. You're not thinking clearly, you know, and, and, and you get so twisted around in your thinking and then you try to defend yourself. Then they'll blame you for this or they'll blame you. They might even accuse you of being a narcissist or accuse you of doing something to them, you know, and you're sitting there all confused. And in the worst possible scenario with the narcissist, you both sit there blaming each other, thinking that you're both gaslighting each other. And it's a terrible situation to be in. And that's when you really just need to take a breath and say, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm not going to play this game. This is really, you know, draining me. Um, if you stand up to someone with narcissistic personality disorder, you can expect them to respond. Once you speak up and set boundaries, they may come back with some demands of their own. They may try to manipulate you into feeling guilty or believing, or to, or believing that you're the one that's being unreasonable and yet you're the one that's trying to control them. Be pre prepared to stand your ground and stand firm and say, hey, look, man, I'm not the one doing this. You are, and I am not gonna, I'm not gonna stand here and put up with it, I'm leaving. Just leave, that's the best thing to do. Remember, this is not your fault. You cannot fix them. Um, instead of trying to help you and understand you, they will try to manipulate you and uh, project their own negative behaviors onto you. So, you know, and you might be tempted to even accept the blame because you just want peace, but don't do that. Don't do that. That's the worst thing you can do. Once you have found the strength and you have um, realized that someone in your life that you love is a narcissist, you need to really, it's all about setting your boundaries. Two things are really important when you're dealing with someone with narcissistic personality disorder. Number one is recognizing that they have it. And you don't need to say you have narcissistic personality disorder that won't get you anywhere. You know, in your mind that they do. Um, and yes, lack of empathy is, which I did say it's a, it's a very big trait of narcissism. It's what is lack of empathy. They don't have any feelings for you. They don't care what they do. They don't care how they make you feel. Um, and someone saying, I think I have a few traits. We all do. Um, and, and I love that you're saying this right now. I'm just going to share this because you don't know who it is. Isn't this one of the biggest traits, lack of empathy? You know, you just don't really care about hurting somebody else's feelings. I think I have a few of these traits. I like to stay in shape and I can be superficial at times. Um, I'm sarcastic at times as, as well. 
I, I love that this person's saying that. We all have traits of narcissism, okay? It's when it goes to such an ex extreme that you truly cannot have any empathy for anyone else. You're constantly sarcastic and making fun of everyone. You really don't care if you hurt someone at all. You're constantly making other people feel bad. And, and here's the thing. So please don't think you're a narcissist. And if you're curious, if you are, please buy this book, Malignant Self Love. It's a great book for someone who does have narcissistic personality disorder. Because by the way, if you have it and you know it and you want to get help for it, there's lots of great help for it. So you can definitely get help for it. We all have something. It's no different than saying, hey, I have anxiety disorder. I want to get help for that. I have depression. I want to get help for that. The big difference is anxiety and depression isn't malicious. You know, it, it destroys the person that has it. It can hurt your family because nobody wants to see you anxious and depressed and it can be draining. The difference is when someone has narcissistic personality disorder, they hurt others. And that's, that's what's really horrible. And they end up looking for people like us, people with anxiety and depression. Um, they have the book on Kindle Unlimited. Thank you so much for that information. I, I highly advise everyone to get the book. It's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It's called Malignant Self-Love. It's by a psychiatrist and it's about narcissism and it's a brilliant read. Just the intro, you go, you know me. And it, I'm like, oh my God, I've, it's unbelievable. And I, you know, I once had someone in my life who was, had severe narcissistic personality disorder. And it, it nearly drove me crazy because that person kept trying to convince me that I had a problem and I was so vulnerable and they were so brilliant that I thought, well, maybe they're right until I read about narcissistic personality disorder. And I realized, oh my God, they really have severe narcissistic personality disorder. And um, you want to know if someone has it, tell them to read that book. And if they don't want to read the book, it's because they don't want to know. <laughs> Send them the book. Try that. <laughs> uh, because people who think they might have it and are really concerned about it don't want to read the book. So just the fact that someone's saying, you know, hey, I, I might have this, I'm concerned, you know, then check it out. Google it. See if it's you. There are tests you could take. There are quizzes online. And if you think you have it, you can be helped because nobody wants to hurt anybody. The, the difference is if you if you're severely if you have severe narcissistic personality disorder you don't care if you hurt anybody you really just don't care trust me i have people in my life who have severe narcissistic personality disorder they do not care if they hurt you in fact they justify all these reasons why you might have deserved it why you're so stupid or you're so ignorant or you're so beneath them you're so unevolved you deserve to be hurt. It's disgusting. And no one in their right minds would literally want to hurt people. And people with anxiety and depression, that's the one thing we don't want to do is hurt people. So, you know, that's why I'm bringing this to your attention tonight, because so many of us end up being narcissistic feed and you can really get caught up in, but, but, but I, I, I don't get caught up in it because it is very consuming and you will lose. You will lose. You can never win an argument with a narcissist because they don't care. They don't care how much they hurt you. And they're already in their minds thinking of ways to manipulate you and turn the conversation around so that you're the one to blame, that you're the one walking away, questioning your, your brain, questioning your sanity. If they're really good, you might walk away questioning your sanity. Who wants to be around someone who makes you question your sanity? Who makes you feel bad about yourself? Um, you know, so somebody else is coming up and asking about it. Um, you know, yes, this is really brilliant too. Um, somebody is also saying, I love it when you guys share that they were, they were growing up and they had some of these egotistic traits and, and ex exhibited some of these behaviors. Someone called them on it, helped them to grow up and develop some emotional intelligence and empathy and took a lot of trauma healing and they've learned to get off their high horse. Thank you for sharing that. Because again, I, you know, a lot of narcissists, people who have, you know, really severe narcissistic uh, personality disorder, they would post it that, you know, 
they they're always right they know everything and in fact they're so confident and that's why they're they're, they're the way they are and there's nothing wrong with them it's everybody else <laughs> you know and it's tough man it is really tough it's tough to be friends with those people it's tough to date those people it's tough to have family members you know in your family circle that are those people but we all probably do somewhere so i'm just giving you a heads up because it's not, you know, a topic that anybody wants to talk about, but I think it's a really important topic. So that said, I want to talk about how does this affect person, you know, like affect a person like us, like, and I, when I say us, highly super sensitive, very anxious person who's a people pleaser, who wants everybody to like them, who has a hard time feeling like, you know, we're enough. Well, how do you think that affects that we are, we are narcissistic feed and look it up. It's like they prey on people like us that they can behind closed doors or maybe not, maybe they would do it in public, make you feel this big and tell you how messed up you are and that you did something you didn't do. And then you say, I don't remember doing that. Oh, well, see, there's something wrong with your memory. I, it's amazing how manipulative they are. And I, I, I just want to tell you, please be aware because I love all of you very much and, um, and I want you all to get on with your lives and feel happy. And I think what it's really about is picking the people that you allow into your circle, that you allow into your energy space. And you know what? It doesn't mean you might have family members that, are, that have na uh, narcissistic personality disorder. You're not going to get rid of them. But what you can do is, what did I say? Set boundaries. And when they start going off on you and making fun of you or telling you you don't remember or that you're ignorant or that you're this or you're that, you know, or how you should do this, how you should do that, step back, breathe and say, they have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not going to take anything they say personally. And then when they start pushing your buttons, say, you know, if you keep talking to me like that, I'm going to leave and then leave. That's how you handle them. And then you have to make a decision. If it's a friend, why do I have this person in my life when all they do is make me feel bad about myself? You know, if, if you have a relationship with a severe narcissist and it's a one-way relationship and you're the one doing all the giving and all the taking and they just sit and tell you how great they are all the time, how, must, how, how messed up everybody else is, why do you have that friendship? You know, why do we have friendships like that? Do we really feel like that's all, that's all we're worth? So start asking yourself, why am I hanging around with people that don't respect me? You know, that's so sweet. <laughs> Somebody just said something really sweet. You know, I, I struggle with you to stay in relationships with people who embrace me and love me for who I am and who support the new and exciting things in my life. And narcissists often don't, they, they may put you down, you know, when you go out and buy a new dress, they may put you down and make fun of some special little car you were able to buy that you've always wanted. They make fun of the fact that you're dating someone that's maybe 10 years younger than you, but you finally found love. You know, narcissists tend to sarcastically always have a reason to make you feel bad about yourself. So the next time you're with someone that continually makes you feel bad about yourself. You wouldn't do that. I know you, all of you. You know, you would never deliberately want to make someone constantly feel bad about themselves. So ask yourself, why is someone doing that to you? Probably because they have narcissistic personality disorder. So our, our lesson tonight is don't let anybody treat you like that. <laughs> and when they do, ask yourself, go online, you know, read the definition of narcissistic personality personality disorder and then say to yourself wow maybe that's what's going on with them doesn't mean i can't love them it doesn't mean i can't hang out with them but the next time they mouth off i can say hmm that's what's wrong with them i don't need to take it personally and i can set boundaries and say won't let you talk to me like that anymore i'm stepping away and then go step away step away for a day step away for a week step away for a month but step away all right, that's the lesson for tonight. I wanted to tell you guys I'm heading out and I'm going to take a fabulous trip with my fabulous fiance. And uh, I won't be uh, on this Zoom call for a while. We'll be 
filling in with some other, um, I, I'm going to actually do some Zoom calls without an audience and they'll be up um, I, for I, every other week, there'll be Zoom calls and podcasts. So you can still find me that way. And I will be gone for, um, you know, uh, I'll be gone for a couple of weeks and then I'll be back and I'll let you know when. Uh, no, I'm not getting married. <laughs> so it's like, you guys getting married? <laughs> not yet. I'm engaged. We're not getting married, but we're going looking for our wedding destination. And I'm sharing that with you because I have the most beautiful man um, who is so loving and kind. And all he does is tell me um, how brilliant I am and how much he loves me. And you are so brilliant <laughs> and how special I am. And you know, um, once you meet someone that makes you feel loved and special, um, I, I just can't even imagine myself being with a different kind of man. Um, so you deserve, you're the kind of people I know, cause I know who you are, you know, you deserve to be with people who embrace you, you know, the good and the bad and the stupid things you say and the things you forgot yesterday. I'm 65 years old. I forget things sometimes, you know, um, I have a glass of wine. I may say something I shouldn't say, uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't remember, you know, what happened yesterday, <laughs> but I might not, you know, I'm 65. I, I, it's, it's all about loving yourself as you find yourself, recognizing things that you need to work on, that you want to work on. Um, and, and yet not letting other people tell you how to live your life, how to behave, how to dress. That said, you know, if someone says, hey, you know, you use the F word too much or are you dress, you're dressing inappropriately around my friends, you know, if your daughter says that, you know, then you need to hear that, right? But if someone's constantly putting you down and making fun of you and being malicious, you don't need to hear that. And you might want to think about who you're hanging out with. All right, that's it. I am Lucinda Bassett. I am here to help you help yourself. I mean, all I care about right now is giving you some tools so that you feel empowered so that you can get out there and enjoy your life and feel valuable and know that you are enough just the way that you are and that you can choose your relationships very carefully and allow people into your space that are worthy of being in your space. And I don't mean that from a narcissistic perspective. I mean, people who treat you well and love you unconditionally and make you feel better about yourself all the time, just in their space. Do you, do you have somebody in your life that just being with them makes you feel better about you because that's the kind of people you should be hanging out with. And I have people that I know when I call them, if I'm having a bad day or a good day, they're going to love me. And if I look like a slob and I show up for dinner, they're going to love me and say, you look fabulous. <laughs> and if I say something stupid, they're going to laugh with me, not at me. The other kind of people, I don't care so much about having them in my life. So that's it. We're going to breathe. So um, I'm Lucinda Bassett. I hope you'll follow me on uh, Let Go With Lucinda, my podcast. It's on every podcast platform. I hope you'll follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you want to do some coaching with me, I would love to hear from you. You can reach me. Um, all you got to do is call Darla. And the best way to reach Darla is at 419-350-7499. And we have group coaching. I do individual coaching. We're going to be doing some breath retreats probably after the first of the year. We'll be doing one in November, but due to the Delta variant, we're not doing that. Um, and I wanted to mention, you know, we are all on the road to getting our, a booster shot. And we do believe that's going to really help with this Delta variant. So uh, I do see that there will be an end to this probably in the next year. But right now it's a little scary, but if you can get your booster, you can get out there and travel. Um, kids are back in school. We're going to see how that goes. Um, you know, it's interesting. People are doing different things. A friend of mine went to a big concert uh, on Saturday. There were probably 5,000 people there. And she said less than 10% of the people had masks on. So, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? I think it was in Tennessee. Um, so everything's going kind of crazy right now, but we will get through this. If you can get a booster, please get a booster. Um, meanwhile, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, uh, go, please subscribe to my podcast, let go of Lucinda. And, uh, you can look me up on YouTube as well. So I will be back in a couple of weeks. I'll let you know when, meanwhile, we're going to keep going with these zoom calls. They just, I won't have an audience for a couple of weeks. All right. I'm going to breathe you. So get into position, everybody.
um, let me find my song. And, you know, the breath work is a very powerful tool. And the thing that I love about this breath work is it can really help you with things like dealing with these kind of people, because you can go into the breath work and calm yourself down. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with affirmations. And the best way to do this, and I've talked to you, you know, those of you who've been on this, on this Zoom, I, I really love it when you put your right hand on your chest and your left hand on your solar plexus, which is right below your belly button and above your um, pubic line, I guess, you know, and you're going to breathe into the count of three. So it's, and a short connected breath out. So it's, And if you can keep your breath connected, it's really an incredible experience. And I'm going to give you some powerful affirmations going into the breath work. We're going to listen to one song. I always recommend to people to download, download Jennifer Barazin radio, and then go into this, you know, this breath work for five to 10 minutes, two songs, use some of the affirmations. We, if you want affirmations, email Darla and uh, you can, and you can get the affirmations. I think we have 10 of them. Download them on your phone and do the breath work at home. All right. So we're going to go into this fabulous song. I don't love this song. I love all my breath work songs, but I'm not legally allowed to use them. So we're going to go with this song. Hold on. I have to turn it up here. All right. Let's get this music on. This is when I need a producer, right? Okay, I don't know why we're not hearing this music. Wait a minute. Huh. All right, my music's not playing. I don't know why not. Here we go. Try this one. Hmm. You guys. Why is this not working? This is what I need, Michael. All right, I'm gonna play one of my favorite songs then and we'll have to use another breath session. I like this when this happens actually because then I get to play my favorite breath song. So we're gonna go with this one. Okay. Some of you may know this song. This is called 100,000 Angels. And somebody must have needed to hear this tonight. It's by Bliss. If you go on Jennifer Baraz and Radio, Bliss is one of my favorite artists. When I got hit by the truck, this, this was one of my favorite songs. And I would do the breath work in the hospital. And I would listen to this song, breathing in, breathing out. It's called 100,000 Angels. When I got hit by that truck and I laid in that bed and I looked up and I saw my son Sammy rocking back and forth and he was surrounded by 100,000 angels. And I'm here to tell all of you beautiful people, all of you beautiful souls of people that you are surrounded by 100,000 angels tonight. <sighs> Breathing in. I call upon the I Am Presence, Masters of Light, and angelic forces to give everyone here tonight a clear signal of their connection to a higher power, to their higher self. Breathing in to the count of three. Short breath out as though you're breathing on a mirror. I am divine worthiness. I am worthy. Safe for me to be here. Safe for me to surrender. Safe for me to breathe. Breathing in. My heart and God's well are one. All I need is within me now. I forgive and let go of the past. 
I am aligned and in rhythm with the energy of the universe. Keep breathing. Safe for me to be here. Safe to me for me to express my needs. I'm always cared for. Safe to be in my body. Safe to set boundaries. I am loved and loving. Do you? Masters of light and angelic forces, I call upon the great I am presence to give everyone here any information or signs he or she may need at this time. Keep breathing, feeling that incredible universal energy from the top of your crown chakra all the way down to your sacral chakra, heart chakra, solar plexus chakra. This energy is flowing through your body. It's the universe. It's God energy. It's your energy. Can you feel it? Almost as you chill. It is your breath. It is your God energy. It's your beauty. No one, no one can hurt that or take that away from you. And if they try, set your boundaries. Get back into balance. Remember who you are. We give thanks for this perfect breath session this evening. I hope that you will all go away from this night and this, this, this session thinking about your boundaries, thinking about the, the people that you want to allow into your space and knowing that you know no one's perfect, that no one has the right to harm you. And, and if they do, you have the right to step away and say, you know, kindly and calmly. Um, I'm not going to be talked to that way. I'll come back when you've had a chance to think about how you're going to talk to me. I'm not going to be talked to that way. We all have the right to be happy. We all have the right to feel safe. We all have the right to feel cared for. We all have the right to be loved and be loving. We all have the right to feel like we're enough. And when someone in your life makes you feel like you aren't, step back set your boundaries and go back to this breath work and remember who you are stand in your beauty and your power with that i wish you all a fabulous next couple of weeks i'm gonna miss you <laughs> and i'll be back soon in the meantime there will be sessions sessions for you to listen to i promise you that so uh, if you're missing me come to the zoom two weeks from now there will be a zoom I just won't be live and uh, you can follow me on my podcast. All right. All right, you guys take care, stay out of trouble, stay in your power. Peace out.